It's been called the blizzard of the century, the snowstorm battering the U.S. and Canada. An emergency has been declared for New York State, which is bearing the brunt of the storm. At least 50 people have died across the United States. Snow has buried parts of Buffalo, New York, and emergency crews are struggling to reach trapped residents. Some of the dead have been found frozen in vehicles and snowbanks. Severe weather events are becoming increasingly common. Floods, fires, and extreme temperatures wreaked havoc across the world in 2022, one of the warmest years on record. Places where cold is the norm are experiencing abnormal temperatures with devastating consequences. This is no rowdy ski holiday. It's a research station near the South Pole. And minus 11.8 degrees Celsius was 40 degrees hotter than usual on March 18th. It's probably the largest temperature anomaly ever recorded. Incredibly, at the same time at the North Pole, some places were 30 degrees warmer than usual. Mountain glaciers, such as this one in the Himalayas that feeds the mighty river Ganges, continued to shrink as India was hit by heat waves that came earlier and were longer and or hotter than usual. Pakistan also sweltered. A few weeks later, both countries were hit by massive monsoon rains. One third of Pakistan was flooded, creating a huge humanitarian emergency. The floods destroyed farmland, killed more than 1,700 people and displaced more than 33 million. My child died in the damp, cold nights. We don't have anything to eat. My husband is unemployed and poor. My two children have died in the camps. West Africa also suffered an unusually heavy rainy season, with months of flooding in Nigeria displacing up to two million people. In East Africa, the rains failed again, worsening the most severe drought in recent history. The UN says 36 million people are affected in Somalia and parts of Ethiopia and Kenya, with more than five million children malnourished. They're sickly most of the time. They go to bed on an empty stomach. I just feel terrible. In Madagascar, the seasonal rains also failed. After four years of drought, the south of the island is facing a food crisis. In some places, Residents have had to dig into the dry riverbed to find water. 2022 also saw China suffer its longest and harshest heat wave on record, with the Yangtze and other rivers reduced to mere trickles and many lakes turned into dust bowls. And for more on this, let's talk to Matthew Capucci. He's a meteorologist and atmospheric scientist based out of Washington, D.C. Uh, Matthew, good to have you back. The, the blizzard of the century, they're calling it. H has this storm in North America earned that title? I think it most definitely has because it had so many different acts. It actually began as something called a bomb cyclone. Essentially, this rapidly intensifying low pressure system over the Great Lakes that caused a flash freeze to the east, brought an Arctic Siberian cold front across the central U.S., dumped prolific snows, and brought temperatures down to minus 40 Celsius over the north central U.S., winds to probably 90 to 130 kilometers per hour. And then the second act occurred in Buffalo with lake effect snows totaling about 150 or more centimeters and roughly 24 at least dead. And it's been, you know, that said, a year full of extreme weather, as we've just seen in that report all over the world. Is there even worse yet to come, do you think? So I think the question everyone's asking is whether or not this particular event is tied to human-induced climate change. When it comes to Buffalo, so there are certain things we can link to climate change, certain things we can't link to climate change, because weather, of course, is sort of what you get, and climate is what you expect. In the case of what happened in Buffalo, I, I think that you know, if we were seeing warmer water temperatures in the Great Lakes, uh, we would be saying, yes, likely more snowfall and sort of more lake effect snows. Uh, what happened in Buffalo, though, doesn't really bear that fingerprint because the water temperatures were normal and ice cover over the lake was normal. So Buffalo, probably not. That said, there are some things that will be made more extreme thanks to climate change. Uh, wetter storm systems, more drought at times uh, due to something called the closet platform relationship. Basically, warmer air can hold more water stronger hurricanes, and perhaps, uh, like we said, bigger flood events, ultimately. And we were just looking earlier at a report about, uh, you know, 
warm weather in Antarctica and in the Arctic and the, and the global events uh, of climate change in 2022. Is, is there much that humans can do to limit the damage to the climate that, that we've already caused, do you think? So this will sound like a rather pessimistic uh, answer, but unfortunately, uh, the climate is kind of like a, a freight train and that there are a couple of stable states. Once you push Earth out of its stable state, the Earth will start accelerating towards a different stable state. So we were in kind of a comfy place for a while. We started nudging Earth towards a hothouse scenario. Whether or not that comes to be realized remains to be seen. What humans should be doing is adapting and mitigating, changing their infrastructure to be ready for what's coming tomorrow, rather than building our infrastructure based on what was normal for today. Okay, thank you. Meteorologist and atmospheric scientist Matthew Capucci in Washington, D.C.